we are finally ready to talk about the violations of exchangeability. We know what exchangeability is. We know that exchangeability allows us to say association is causation. We know how to achieve exchangeability in experiments. We simply randomize or we conditionally randomize. However, in a lot of cases, we aren't dealing with just experiments. In a lot of cases, we're dealing with observational data where different people choose to be treated for different reasons. So what can violate exchangeability in these reasons? Let me go ahead and give you an example. I want you to consider this following example. So consider the following example. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a causal diagram. I have A, which is a treatment. In this case, it's a heart transplant. I have Y. This is the outcome, this is day's survival. Let's say that A doesn't have a causal effect on Y. Okay, so there's no arrow here, no arrow here. But there is some confounder, some unmeasured variable U that affects both A and Y. So for example, this could be hmm, uh, maybe the severity of the patient's disease. So the severity affects how often they go in for treatment and it also affects their outcome, which is how long they survive. Now I have two questions for you. Question number one, is there causation? So is there causation? Well, A obviously doesn't cause Y. There's no arrow. How do we know this? Uh, well, uh, let's say you've got some sort of godlike knowledge in this particular uh, uh, circumstance, or A is actually a placebo. So in this case, there is no causation. The second question I ask you is, is there association? Well, obviously from D separation, we know that there is a path from A to Y that contains no blockers. So yes, we do have association. So what do we have here? We have a natural violation of exchangeability. There are two ways to naturally violate exchangeability. We're gonna be talking about them in the future lecture videos. Way number one, we call confounding. Confounding. The other way people call this is common causes. So to the left, this diagram shows an example of a confounding variable, U. So this is a confounder. It is a common cause of both A and Y. There's many different ways we can get common causes, but we will see later on if we simply condition upon this common cause a and Y are no longer related, which is the true causal effect because there's no causation. So we'll see how we can deal with confounding and observational uh, studies later on. The second way that things can happen is something called selection bias. Selection bias. This one is a little bit trickier, but selection bias comes about when you condition on common effects. Uh, we'll go into great detail on selection bias and confounding in the later lecture videos. But what I want you to understand is very simple. Exchangeability we can get if we have control over the experiment. We simply conditionally randomize. However, if we want exchangeability in the sense of an observational study, we need to do much, much more. And that is we need to control for confounding and for selection bias. And if we can control for confounding and selection bias, this true causal effect can be isolated.